Uh, I'd like to invite Philip to speak next. Philip Hamill is um, an incredible poet who's published over, I think, 24 collections of books. He's a sculptor, runs an um, uh, incredible publishing company and has travelled around the world, was born in Detroit and came into the first correctional centre that we worked with, John Moroni. It was the very one of the very first programs that we did. At that stage, the concept was we would have one poet who would run all four workshops and we would have visiting poets each time. But what we found was there was no ability really to sense up this space or community of trust. So the idea of a poet flashing in and flashing out um, was one that we didn't end up using. However, the work that Philip created and his approach to poetry and poetics and life itself is something that's been incredibly useful for us in sharing with the inmates in the anthologies of different types of poetries that we give when we work in the workshops. So Philip, I'd like to invite you to share your stories. Speaking of flashing, I guess you guys are probably wondering what the, what the ancient guy is doing wearing a 1967 genuine hippie shirt from San Francisco, you can put it down to uh, nostalgia. The good old days, yeah. Uh, this is a poem I wrote after my uh, very short, brief visit to the prison. It's called Biting. The men were biting my arms. The horse was blindfolded. No one would extinguish the fire in the next room. It will burn forever, and you with it, said the old woman, the mother of the men. She took off her clothes, put them into a box, and gave it to me. Put them on, she said, and give me yours. I did as I was told, and became a mother of seven men for eight hours. When I told my sons to bite the old woman's arms, they refused. Then we exchanged clothes again. This went on for seven months. On the first day of the eighth month, the horse was taken to the burning room. After we ate the horse, the old woman told her sons to bite my arms. So I, I don't have a clue uh, how my little um, day went in the in the uh, prison. I don't. I got a few 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 laughs, and uh, a couple of the guys came up and had a bit of a chat with me. So I don't know. Probably thought I was just you know another old fool. But anyway, uh, I'm going to read a, a poem by one of the uh, students. It's, this is it's a, he's obviously a very intelligent guy who's been doing a lot of thinking about our poor, sorry planet. Um, like Anthony, I live up in the Blue Mountains. So I've been there for, since 1984. And every single day we have God knows how many coal trains going down the hill taking coal not only to our obsolete polluting power factories, but sending it to China. So we, we, can, we can pollute both hemispheres. We're doing a great job, folks. Let's piss off the coal mines. Anyway, this is by Mark. Magnetic impulses, oh, sorry, it's called Art of War. Magnetic impulses travel toward the cerebral cortex, carefully handled and barricaded before there's perplex. Illusions predicting accidents to strike and occur. Mind state position, comfortable and equipped with jacket and fur, procrastinating negative thoughts with a demon right beside me. No such thing as a crucifix, only darkness which shines brightly. A journey to heaven no longer was this place and existence. Only a type of mirage with Lucifer's voice echoing with persistence. A memory activated once threatened in any condition. Hideous fallen angel commands you to take the decision. Spycological warfare is a slave to the mind's imprisonment. 
poised to decapitate with a crooked, sharp implement. Visualize a drawn portrait to the procedure to act of war. First category selected, the instinct of rise and fall. These creatures of death are more like pink panthers. Now suicide got me overboard like a ship's anchor. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.